Okay, hello everyone. This is Katie. I'm the Rolling Reading Queen, and this is Nyasha Williams. She is the author of this gorgeous book, What's the Commotion in the Ocean? So, Nyasha, can you tell us a bit about yourself, please? Sure. I'm a kindergarten teacher and an author, and I live out here in Colorado. I teach in Aurora, and I've always wanted to be a mermaid. Yes, awesome. Me too. Um, so, when did you write this book? So I wrote it last summer. Is when okay. I wrote it. Um, yeah, I just had some inspiration in the middle of the night and I just started jotting it down on paper. That is awesome. Um, so what did it take to make it besides, oops, um, you just, I know you just said that you just had this inspiration in the middle of the night, but um, how long did it take you? Like, a week, a month, the whole stuff. Yeah. So that book, um, What's the Commission of the Ocean? It took me about a week, I would say. Oh, wow. Um, jot it all down and get it to r the rhymes to work and make sense and awesome. double check those rhymes like with people and make sure that it's flowing the way I want it to flow. That is really awesome. That's really quick. Uh, how did you get the illustration, illustrations and the, uh, go through the publishing process, all of that? So Illustrator, I found a website called Fiverr. I mean, obviously I was new in all of this, so I was watching every YouTube video out there trying to figure out what I should do. Should I go through traditional publisher? Should I self-publish? So I was looking through everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up looking at this website called Fiverr and they have people who do freelancing. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up finding an amazing illustrator in that way. And that was really exciting. So yeah. um, I was really blessed to find a great illustrator, Sophia, and I'm still working with her on some projects now. Oh. And she's just, she's really great at being able to see my vision and just be able to put it on paper for me. That is really cool. The illustrations are gorgeous. So <laughs> what are those next projects? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I have, um, my alphabet book it was the affirmation alphabet book that I, was actually the first book I ever wrote, Aww. but I had such a specific vision for it. I had, I was like, I need to sit on this for a minute and really think about what it's going to embody. And I'm glad I waited because just with um, the Black Lives Matter movement growing and all the different things that are happening, like there's a lot of inspiration for the book. And so I'm really excited that it's coming together and um, just the way it's turning out. Yes. Um, and then I have a series I've been working on with a friend. Um, it is a culinary adventure series. And so it's just these two brother and sister who go on these different adventures. And so we're really excited about that series. And I have a couple other personal projects that I'm working on that I hope to get out there. That is awesome. That's so exciting. Why do you think these kinds of books are important right now that show Black characters? So I when I started teaching, so that's uh, four years ago, I started teaching in Baltimore. That was my first year of teaching. Um, my colleague and I noticed that there just wasn't enough representation for resources in the classroom and books and things. And so we really tried to do our best to make sure our, sh our children were represented in the classroom, but I felt like it was something that I needed to um, go out of my way and, you know, create more resources myself. Yes. And so... I was thinking books and I hope to expand it to other things as well, but I felt like books was a big deal for me. Just like, oh, yeah. it's great for, I mean, and a lot of times when you think of black characters in books, you're thinking of things from the civil rights movement, about Rosa Parks, about, um, you know, MLK, like all these different things. But I was like, our children also deserve to see themselves in books that are just fun, that are just mm -hmm. like, allow them to dream and just enjoy life and are silly. Yeah. I love silly books. And so yeah. that's my dream is to just make some more fun books for kids and um, also make sure our kids are being represented in fields that we aren't necessarily um, predominant in yet. Yes, that is really, really important. Uh, so how can we continue to support you and your endeavors? Yeah. So I mean, you can definitely follow me on Instagram and that's where I post a lot of updates about my books and things that projects I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, I also try and post resources for people who are trying to be allies during this time. Um, so I also have on my website, 
if you're interested, I have, obviously, you can purchase the book, signed copies. It's also available on Amazon. Okay. Um, if you want a signed copy. And then I have um, a donation tab also in my, um, on my website, just for people who they want to support my writing process. So because obviously it can get costly with all the illustrations and things. So just being able to lift a hand in that way would be really helpful. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So is there anything else you would like to share with us today? Um, I, I'll, I don't have much to say. I would just say that I think it's important that all children see themselves in books and are reflected in books. And it's a window. Um, books can be a window and a mirror. So it's for kids to be able to see themselves, but it's also a window for other kids to be able to be exposed to other kids being the protagonist or the hero or the main character in a story. And I think both sides are important. Absolutely. That's beautiful. I love that too. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
How do you think she feels about that? Do you think she feels happy? Mm, no, probably not. She probably feels pretty angry and sad. Yeah. Fertilizer from lawns and farms, motor oil, and sewage too. Then wash down into streams and rivers like a thick, grimy goo. Ugh. The goo then flows into the seas and oceans, ending up polluting our waters like a thick, dark potion. Ugh. You see that? It's on her fingers. How does she look? How, how do you think she feels by looking at her face? Do you think she looks happy? As the number of humans has continued to grow, their demand for seafood has messed up the ocean's status quo. The way humans are currently fishing is unsustainable. If it keeps happening at the current rates, seafood will become unattainable. Oh no. So these people are fishing and they said that if people are continuing to fish the way they are now, then we won't be able to have seafood because it there won't be enough for everyone. That's not good. So it affects the animals and the mermaids in the ocean, but it also affects everyone here on earth. On ground. As oil and water do not mix, Oil spills put us, ocean dwellers, in quite a fix. The oil sits on the surface of our home, causing the harm of animals and helping create awful dead zones. Oh no. Dead zones are areas of water with low oxygen, with excessive pollution being the origin. In dead zones, marine or plant life is impossible. Humans need to take action against this mess for which they are responsible. That's right. How are you going to help? You can do things too to help save the earth, and the art, the ocean. Do you understand, my friend? This polluting of the oceans really must come to an end. What can be done to prevent further ocean pollution? I plan to provide you with some thorough solutions. She's gonna help us figure out how we can save the earth and its oceans. Reduce, reuse, and recycle as much as you can. Avoiding using Single-use plastic is an excellent start to a plan. Make sure to indulge in safe and sustainable seafood only. See, so we can recycle. And if we eat seafood, make sure it's safe and sustainable. See, a little girl and her mommy going to the store, getting some groceries. Partake in gardening by planting trees and greenery boldly. Oh, see two friends planting a tree. Do you like to garden at home? I do. Take a trip to your nearest beach and help clean up all of the trash you see. It is time for humans to take ownership of your debris. That's right. Debris is trash and see all this this family, they're, they're cleaning up the beach because people left their yucky trash on it. Ugh, that's not very nice. They're litter bugs, huh? But these nice people are cleaning it up. My time is up as I've done my part. Now tell everyone you know about this message from the ocean. 
so that my home can begin a fresh start. The sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. Jacques Cousteau. So that's the end of this beautiful story. What do you think? How are you going to save the ocean? How are you going to save our planet? There's so much we can do. Here is a little page about the illustrator, the person that drew all these gorgeous pictures. And if you, if you read this at home, you can read about her and also the author that I just talked to, Nyasha Williams. And there's even some fun ocean facts. So I hope you all enjoyed this gorgeous book and you have a great day and don't forget to save our planet. Have a great day. Bye-bye.